Well, good morning, and I'd like to call the meeting to order. It's 9 a.m., and it's a beautiful uh, sunny day in Muskoka on June the 13th. And uh, I'm going to read this first, and I will, I will call uh, the meeting to order. Today's meeting is being live streamed and recorded on the Township of Muskoka Lakes website and YouTube channel. By participating in the open public meeting, you are consenting to your image, voice, and comments being recorded and posted online. Thank you. And moved by Member Quinn, second by Member Bosworth. Be it resolved. Quinn isn't here yet. Pardon? Quinn isn't here yet. So One, two, three, four. Yeah. Well, we'll we'll start and then. Uh, uh, Cause, cause oh, okay. Uh, so we'll take it. Um, Member, uh, sorry, member. Uh, sorry, moved by member Creaser, second by member Bosom, with be it resolved that committee of adjustment agenda dated June 13th, 2022, be adopted. All those in favor? And that is carried. And are there any declarations of uh, pecuniary interest? Okay. And uh, would you like to do your, your speech? Um, I think we have to do the adoption in minutes. Okay. Moved by Member Creaser, second by Member Grogan Green, be it resolved that the minutes dated May the 9th, 2022, be adopted and approved as circulated. Any uh, questions or comments? All those in favor? That's carried. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Please note, we have a new Secretary Treasurer and Committee of Adjustment Coordinator, Chelsea Ward. Today, I will be assisting as she gets settled in. It is required that I make a few statements, and then I'll explain the procedures of the hearing. This electronic hearing is being held in accordance with Section 238 of the Municipal Act 2001 due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The members of the Committee of Adjustment present are Chair Alan Edwards, members Joe Quinn, Lisa Grogan Green, Sharon Creaser, and Rob Bosenworth. I confirm we have a quorum. I can also confirm that senior staff and planning staff are present. Public input on this June 13th, 2022 agenda was invited at the following email address, planning at muskokalakes.ca. It should be noted the motions have been pre-populated with random movers and seconders to ex expedite the meeting. When it is time to vote, members shall physically raise their hand until the chair has confirmed the vote. If the vote is unclear, a verbal vote shall be recorded. This is not considered a recorded vote. Now I will explain the hearing process. The planner will provide an explanation and purpose of the application, the date the notice was circulated, and planning staff's comments. All internal and external submissions were sent to committee members Friday, June 10th, 2022. The planner will also present any submissions received after this date. Committee will then hear from the applicant or the applicant's agent if they wish to add any information or to substantiate their proposal. Please provide your name, mailing address, and postal code for our records. Committee will hear from those in support of the application and those in opposition to the application. Again, please provide your name, mailing address, and postal code for our records. If you are here to speak on an application, please wait to raise your hand in Zoom until the planner presents the relevant application. Committee will then hear the applicant or the applicant's agent respond to any questions or concerns raised. Committee will then have the opportunity to ask questions of the applicant and or staff. Committee will debate the application and make a decision based on the information presented at the hearing. 
Please note that the effect of written and oral submissions on decisions of applications for consent and minor variances and the reasons for minor variance decisions as both required under the Planning Act will be pre-populated with standard wording. However, committee may decide to add reasons and or effects to the standard wording after voting on a decision. It must be noted that the chair has a vote on each application and can participate in the discussion. There is a 20 day appeal period from the date of the decision. In the case of a minor variance application, a building permit is not available until after the appeal period and no appeals are received. When you are present at the hearing, please provide us your name, mailing address, and mailing address. Any presentation is limited to five minutes, unless otherwise permitted by committee. Please note the resolutions are automatically written in the positive to assist in completing decisions, as opposed to writing out each resolution. This does not in any way mean an application is going to be approved. And one final note, please take down the pink notice signs that were posted on your property to advertise today's meeting. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Mulholland. And our first application is B11, uh, sorry, B112, 21 ML and applicate and uh, A 9921. That's Heller. And that'll be Miss Darling. Good morning and thank you, Chair Edwards. The first application to be heard is concurrent consent and minor variance application B 112 21 ML and A 9921, the name of Heller. The subject property is known municipally as 14-M48 Island Horseshoe. I would direct committee's attention to the consent sketch on page 37 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is summarized as follows. The applicants propose to sever a portion of their property and create a new lot. And relief is requested from the maximum cumulative dock width of 75 feet on a lot with more than 300 feet of frontage. The existing dock is 122 feet the variance requested is 47 feet. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 18 days in advance and three submissions have been received to date. The first submission was received by the Township's Public Works Technician, Tim Sopko. The second submission is from the Township's Chief Building Official, Nick Snyder. And the third is from the District Municipality of Muskoka, Curtis Sifret. The comments were sent to committee prior to today's meeting, but I am willing to read anything that committee would like. Staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration and have recommended standard conditions of consent, which are that a registrable description of the severed lot and any required rights of way be submitted to the secretary treasurer, along with a registered copy for the, of the reference plan, that the applicant enter into a consent agreement with the township pursuant to section 5126 of the Planning Act, Said agreement shall be registered against the title of the lands and contain a provision to the satisfaction of the township where the applicant agrees not to utilize public parking and docking facilities as the principal means of access to the retained and severed lots. In addition, said provision shall require that adequate long-term parking and docking facilities used to access the newly created lot be secured at all times. The documentation satisfactory to the township securing long-term mainland parking and docking facilities to access the newly created vacant lot be provided. That confirmation be received that the township is satisfied with the severed and retained lots are satisfactory for an on-site sewage disposal and any problems identified with the existing sewage system be corrected to the satisfaction of the township. Um, that an assessment be undertaken by a qualified professional to determine the wildland fire risk and required mitigation measures and any recommendations be implemented to the satisfaction of the township. That cash in lieu of parkland be dedicated to the township in the amount of 5% of the assessed value of the newly created severed lots or the entire lands, whichever is less. That 22 feet of dock width located to the west of the existing boathouse on the retained lot be removed and that cumulative dock width of 100 feet be recognized on the retained lot. Staff have recommended approval of the minor variance application for a cumulative width of 100 feet. Staff are happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Darling. Is the applicant or applicant's agent here wishing to speak on this? I see we have Ms. Wilson. Sorry. Hello. Good morning. 
morning. Um, yes, I'm rep. I'm oh, sorry, I haven't done this for a while. Heather Wilson with Heather Wilson Consulting Services, 14 Janelle Street West, Box 337, Thessalon, Ontario, P0R1L0. I'm representing uh, the Hellers in, in their application today. Uh, they own quite a bit of land on the island, on, on Horseshoe Island. Both lots, once severed, would be quite large. Um, the, I did read through the report and it's, it's everything's good, uh, except for the reduction in the size of the docks. Those docks have been there. Well, the original boathouse structure was built in 1977. I know Mr. Heller did do some additional work when he purchased the lot back in the, I think it was the eighties, very, very long ago. So it's been there all along, it's legal non-compliant. They utilize that section of dock that's being asked to be removed. There's a ramp there um, and it it's, provides easy access to the, um, the vehicle that they use to get up to the cottage. Um, Mrs. Heller has been quite ill for the last couple of years and she's not able to, to do what she used to do on the island. Um, they, they don't feel that should be removed because it has been there for so long. They have no intentions of adding anything to the property now. It's the last time I think they built was when they put the second story on the boathouse in 2002. Um, and they, you know, they don't want to do anything else. The severed lot uh, is going to stay as it is for now. Really the severance is, it's a state planning that they're trying to accomplish here. They're both getting uh, a little older. They're both in their seventies now and looking at what's going to happen in, in the next few years. Um, really, the only thing, the only problem here is, is reducing the docks. Um, they're really concerned that that's going to, you know, change how they, they use their frontage and, and their docking. They're going to have to make other arrangements and, and change the, the pathway that they have from that ramp to, to the roadway that gets them to the cottage. Um, and they don't want to have to do that as well. Last year, they spent quite a bit of money resurfacing their docks. Um, and now they're being asked to basically eat that money and tear it out. Um, I don't know if there's any way we can get around that. I'm hoping there is. Uh, parking and docking, a contract has been arranged for that with, I believe, is SWS um, Marina. So that's already in place. I'm not sure if Mr. Heller dropped that copy off to you yet. If not, I'll get you one right away. Um, so really that, that's the only concern the Hellers have is with the docking, the fact that it has been there for a long time. No proposal to change any of it is, is in the works at all. They like it just the way it is. Um, and they really would, uh, they really wanna keep it. Uh, thank you for your time. Any questions, please uh, ask. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else wishing to speak in support of this application? No? Anyone wishing to speak in opposition to this application? No? Okay. Uh, questions from the members? Yes, Mr. Bosworth. Well, I'll open a discussion on um, what Ms. Wilson had to say about the dock. Uh, the existing dock, I was wondering if staff could tell us how far it is from the uh, shoreline. Uh, it does, it's not marked. And is that one of the reasons we'd like it removed? Uh, I'll ask Ms. Tarling. Um, it's through you, it's not marked on the site plan, so um, Ms. Wilson might be a better person to ask if she knows the width, of how far it is from the side. I, I didn't do the math, but what would be the width percentage of the total uh, waterfront? I believe it's 35%, sorry, sorry. I think it's in the report, is it? Hmm. 
I thought it was. It's a, it's a rare, my recollection is it's a rare case, case that staff has actually recommended removal of a grandfather dock. Uh, Ms. Barling, do you have an answer to that? Or Mr. Pink, just one second. Good morning, uh, committee. Uh, staff's recommendation is stemming uh, not from, I believe member Bosworth asked about the, the length uh, out into the water. Uh, it is related to the width. And uh, you're correct, we wouldn't, uh, we wouldn't have the authority to re uh, request a legal non-complying dock uh, to be removed on its own. However, an application, uh, two applications are before us. And as much as uh, no plans may currently be uh, in place, by creating the severed lot, the property owners have the right to build 75 feet of additional dock width on the severed lot. That right doesn't exist today because the lot is overdeveloped. Uh, I think the question before you is if a minor variance application were submitted for 75 feet of dock width on the severed lot, uh, resulting in approximately uh, a little over 200 feet uh, of overall docks on the two properties, would committee be supportive? Uh, staff's looked at that and we feel it's appropriate uh, to bring the properties into compliance uh, as a result of the severance process and the additional development rights that would be accrued uh, to the severed lot. If there's a concern um, uh, with removing the structure, uh, staff has some concerns with the size of the uh, largely sun deck over water that's also within a side yard and feels it would be beneficial to remove. Uh, we're not looking for a full reduction to 75 feet. It would still be 100 feet and 25 feet over. Uh, however, if that's a concern with removing that, staff's uh, mentioned in the report, then an alternative option uh, is to impose a condition for a zoning amendment that would limit the amount of docks permitted on the severed lot. Uh, so as to conform with official plan policy and zoning bylaw provisions being no more than 25% uh, total or 75 feet uh, per lot. I hope that helps clarify staff's recommendation and the concerns in this case. It does. Thank you. Can I ask a question? Uh, yes, Member Bosenworth, is that? Uh, no, that's that, Heather Wilson. Okay. Well, I, I, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. sorry. I, again, I haven't done these in a while. Yeah. Yeah, that answers my question. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Now, Ms. Wilson. Can I just ask about a proposed zoning amendment to limit docking? Does Mr. Pink mean limit the docking on the severed lot? like more than what the bylaw already limits it to? Uh, I believe that's right. I think we've done this at least once before that I, I can remember. And what we, we did is on the severed lot, we uh, reduced it from 75 feet to 50 feet. And I believe it was registered on uh, title. Is that right, Mr. Pink? You are uh... Okay, thank you. Uh, you are correct. It would be a uh, condition for a zoning amendment. So the applicant would have two years uh, to apply for that zoning amendment. It would limit the width of permitted docks on the severed lot uh, to whichever amount, again, uh, committee feels is appropriate. Um, just one point of clarification. We don't uh, register uh, zoning bylaw amendments on title, but it would run with the lands. Hmm. Okay, I'd have to talk to my client about that, whether he'd agree to that or not. Uh, um, can okay. I, can, can we put this application aside for until the next, till after the next one, give me a chance to call Mr. Heller and see what he wants to do? Uh, yes, what we can do is we can uh, bring this back towards the end of the, the, the meeting then. Sure. An answer by then. How was that? That's great. That's perfect. Thank you very much. Oh, Get a hold of him right now. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.
And the next application is uh, B 11021 ML. That's uh, Belmore. And that is uh, Ms. Parker. Good morning, Chair Edwards, and good morning, members of committee. Um, the next application to be heard is consent application B slash 110 slash 21 ML in the name of Belmore. The subject property is known municipally as 17 M48 Island Horseshoe. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted consent sketch on page 57 of the agenda package. A severance application has been made to create one additional lot. The severed lot is currently vacant. The retained lot contains a dwelling and a boathouse with an associated dock. Notice of this public hearing was circulated 18 days in advance of today's meeting in accordance with the Planning Act and three comments have been received to date. Comments have been received from Nick Snyder, the Township's Chief Building Official, Tim Sopko, the Township's Public Works Technician and the District of Muskoka. These comments were circulated to committee prior to today's meeting and can be read in full at the request of committee. Staff have been um, staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration and have no objections. If committee is considering approval, staff recommend the following conditions. One, that a registerable description of the severed law and any required rights of way be submitted to the secretary treasurer, along with a registered copy of the reference plan. Two, that a cash in lieu of parkland be dedicated to the township in the amount of 5% of the assessed value of the newly created vacant lot or the entire subject lands, whichever is less. Three, that the applicant enter into a consent agreement with the township pursuant to section 5126 of the Planning Act. Said agreement shall be registered against the title of the lands and contain the provisions, contain a provision to the satisfaction of the township whereby the applicant agrees not to utilize public parking and docking facilities as a principal mean of access to the retained and severed lots. In addition, said provisions shall require that adequate long-term parking and docking facilities used to access the newly created lot and be secured at all times. Four, that, a docu that documentation satisfactory the town to the township, securing long-term mainland parking and docking facilities to access the newly created vacant lot be provided. Five, that confirmation be received that the township is satisfied that the severed lot and retained lots are satisfactory for on-site sewage disposal and that any problems identified with the existing sewage system be corrected and that the availability of a satisfactory access route to the proposed building envelope be confirmed to the satisfaction of the township. And six, that an assessment be undertaken by a qualified professional to determine the wild land fire risk and that any recommendations and required mitigation measures be implemented to the satisfaction of the township. Staff, I'm no further comments, but I'm happy to assist committee with any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Darnie. And is the applicant or applicant's agent here wishing to speak on this? Uh, yes, I'm, uh, I'm the applicant. My wife and I are the applicant, co-applicants, I guess, Mr. Chair. First of all, good morning. I, uh, uh, I uh, read the report over and it's uh, accurate. And uh, uh, We need your uh, name and mailing address and postal code, please. Yes, Brian Belmore. And the address is 345 St. Clair Avenue East, Toronto, M4T1P3. Thank you. Yes, so I, I have read it all over and it's uh, satisfactory. And uh, I'd like to express my thanks to Ms. Mulholland and her uh, help and uh, guidance in buying the application and to uh, Ms. Walker for her uh, uh, careful work in uh, preparing the report. And uh, I think the, uh, from that experience, the uh, township is in good hands if that represents the uh, total uh, performance of your staff. So thanks to them. Well, thank you very much. And that, and uh, is there anyone else here wishing to speak in support of this application? opposition to this application? Then are there questions from the members? Seeing none. <coughs> Excuse me. Moved by member Grogan Green, second by member Quinn, be it resolved that consent be granted for application B-110-21 Belmore for by the following conditions are fulfilled. One, 
a registrable description deed of the separate lot and any required right of way be submitted to the secretary treasurer along with the registered copy of the reference plan. Two, that the cash in lieu of parkland be dedicated to the township in the amount of 5% of the assessed value of the newly created vacant lot or the entire subject lands, whichever is less. Three, that the applicant enter into a consent agreement with the township pursuant to section 5126 of the Planning Act. Said agreement shall be registered against the title of the lands and contain a provision satisfaction to the township where, whereby the applicant agrees not to utilize public parking and docking facilities as their principal means of access to the retained lot and separate lots. In addition, said provision shall require that adequate long-term parking and docking facilities used to access the newly created lot be secured at all times. For the documentation satisfactory to the township securing long-term mainland parking and docking facilities to access the newly created lot be provided. Five, the confirmation be received that the township is satisfied that the severed and retained lots are satisfactory for on-site sewage disposal, that any problems identified with the existing sewage system be corrected, and that the availability of the satisfactory construction access route to the proposed building envelopes be confirmed to the satisfaction of the township. And six, that an assessment be undertaken by a qualified professional determine the, the wildland fire risk and that any recommendations and requirement mitigations measures be implemented to the satisfactory of the township. And are there any questions or comments? All those in favor? I think there's more to the resolution. Pardon? I think there's more to the resolution. Right, just on the other side. This okay, sorry. This application confirms with the requirements of the comprehensive zoning bylaw 2014-14 has amended and the township's official plan in the district municipality of Muskoka. Pursuant to section 41, Section 53 of the Planning Act, all conditions exposed must be fulfilled within two years from the date of sending the, of the notice of decision, and the application is deemed to be received. All those in favor? There's still more to talk, sorry. And there's still some of that. Oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> We're getting a, it's a long one. <laughs> it's like a book. <laughs> and it is requiring that all conditions uh, imposed be fulfilled prior to the granting of the consent and given the section, secretary treasurer of a certificate providing as a section 42 of subsection 53 of the Planning Act, 1990, chapter P13 be amended. All those in favor? All those in favor? And that is carried. Okay, and the uh, next one is B0422 ML Greer. Thank you and good morning, Chair Edwards and members of committee. The next application to be heard is Severin's application B0422 in the name of Greer a municipal address has not yet been assigned to this property. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted consent sketch on page 72 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of this application is as follows. To grant a right of way over parts of an existing private road on the Greer property in favor of the property located at 1558 Fish Hatchery Road, Unit 37 in the name of Marshall. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 17 days in advance of this meeting and five submissions have been received to date. Comments have been received from Nick Snyder, the Township Chief Building Official, stating that they have no objection to the application. Comments have been received from Sandy Boss, the Township Septic Inspector, who states that they have no comment regarding the proposed right-of-way. 
Tim Sopko, the township's public works technician, provided comment noting that a township road allowance is located to the east of the benefiting lot, and as such recommended that should a road be proposed now or in the future on or across this road allowance that a license agreement be required. Curtis Sivret, District Municipality of Muskoka Planner, provided comments stating that they have no objection to the proposed consent. And Ken Short, area neighbor, provided comment on this application, stating that they do not object to the application, but recommend that the Township of Muskoka Lakes develop a plan to encourage landowners to establish formal road use and maintenance committees, and for the Township to make a standard condition when right-of-ways are granted that the benefiting road user pay initiation fees and commit to ongoing maintenance and plowing fees. These comments were circulated to committee prior to today's meeting and can be read in full at the request of committee. Staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration and have no objection. If committee is considering approval, staff recommend the following conditions. That a registrable description of the severed lot be submitted to the secretary treasurer along with a registered copy of the reference plan and that a license agreement be required to build a road on or across a township road allowance if necessary. Staff have no further comments at this time and are happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Crowder. And I see the applicant is here, or the applicant's agent. I am. If we have your name, address, and postal code, please, Susan. Sorry, yes. Susan Marshall, P.O. Box 152, Windermere, P.O.B. 1P0. Would you like me to go ahead? Okay. Okay, sorry. Um, so we have owned um, this cottage property. The family has owned it for uh, 40, almost 47 years, since August of 76. Uh, and we have always accessed the property via this um, roadway, uh, right away. Um, we have, it's, it's in two portions. One portion of it goes across um, five properties and we have, we have the um, legal registered access for that portion of it. But for some reason, the first portion of the access um, we, we don't have um, the legal registration for and I'm not sure why, but, and, and I'm not sure if other properties that access it have that, um, that as well. Um, but our lawyer had brought it to our attention that there was a section of the access that we use that, um, that wasn't set up properly. Um, so there's about 12 properties that, that access um, their cottages via, via that portion of the, um, the road. Um, yeah, so I think that's, uh, and there was also mention of the, um, um, oh, darn, the, um, the road, uh, right, I can't think of the term, sorry, the access, um, the, um, road right of way, um, maybe that's not the term, but anyway, um, off of ours that um, we have no intention of using that um, other road right of way um, that that is on a portion of that um, to access the lake. The, sorry if I'm not saying that correctly. Um, anyway, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer anything. Okay. Are there any questions from members? Mm -hmm. Nothing. Nothing. Didn't ask if anyone was in opposition or something. Yeah. And uh, it's, there's no one in support or opposition. Um, no, I don't think so. No. Okay. Luke, member Creaser, second member Bosenworth. Be it resolved in application B0422 ML Greer be approved with the subject to the following conditions. One, a registrable description deed of the severed lot right away be submitted to the secretary treasurer along with a registered copy of the reference plan. And two, that the license agreement be required to build the road on or across the township road allowance if necessary. 
And this application conforms with the requirements of the Comprehensive Zoning Bylaw 2014-14 as amended in the Township Official Plan and the District Municipality or Muskoka Official Plan. And the rest is just uh, straightforward, so I'm not going to read that at this time. And are there any uh, questions or comments? All those in favor? And that is carried. And the next application is B-11621, Canadian National Railway. And that is Mr. Sawyer. Thank you, Chair Edwards, and good morning, members of the committee, members of the public. Uh, the next application to be heard is consent application B-161 ML, the name of Canadian National Ra Railway Company. The subject lands do not have a municipal address assigned, but are located uh, within the community of Torrance with road frontage on Torrance Road. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted consent sketch on page 87 of today's agenda package. And the purpose and effect of the application is to create one additional lot with frontage on Torrance Road. Uh, the severed lot is to be used for the construction of a garage used only for storage and the rail corridor use on the retained lot is to continue. Uh, in this case, the applicant is advised that the lands are currently actually comprised of two separate abutting parcels of land, but that the current common lot boundary between these two existing parcels is different than the lot configuration that is proposed here today. Uh, CN recently initiated a registry office um, process to merge these two existing parcels, and the purpose of today's application is to request consent approval to then resever these lands uh, to to achieve a different lot configuration, the proposed lot configuration. In effect, the pro this process of merging the lands and then resevering the lands um, will have a similar result as would a lot addition, uh, resulting in a change in common lot lines. Uh, notice of this public hearing was circulated 17 days in advance of today's meeting in accordance with the Planning Act and five comments have been received. Uh, the District of Muskoka, Bell Canada, and the Township's Chief Building Official do not have any concerns with the application. Uh, the Township's Public Works Technician, Tim Sopko, has recommended that the approval be subject to the availability of an entrance permit for the severed lot. And uh, Sandy Boss, the Township's Septic Inspector, has advised that there is ample area for an on-site sewage system on the severed lot. A detailed staff report has been prepared for committee's consideration. Staff have recommended that the application be approved subject to standard conditions for a severance, uh, requiring that a registrable description of the severed lot and any required right of way be submitted to the secretary treasurer along with a registered copy of the reference plan. Um, also that the recommended um, a condition requiring that satisfaction, satisfactory confirmation be received uh, showing that the registry office's process to merge the two existing parcels has been finalized. And third, uh, that um, is a condition uh, requiring the dedication to the Township of Cash and Lua Parkland, the amount of 5% of the assessed value or a newly created lot or the entire lands, whichever is less. Uh, there's all, there are also conditions requiring confirmation that the severed lot is satisfactory for on-site sewage disposal and that it be confirmed that an entrance permit is available. Lastly, a condition is recommended requiring that a zoning approval be obtained to prohibit habitable development on the severed lot. Uh, this requirement has been added because uh, official plan policies require the completion of noise and vibration studies where sensitive land uses such as residential development are proposed um, in close proximity to a railway. In this case, these studies have not been completed. However, only a garage for storage, storage purposes is proposed on the severed lot. Uh, therefore, in the absence of um, such studies, residential uses should be prohibited on the severed lot prior to the lot being created. Uh, provided the approval is subject to these conditions, staff have no concerns. I have no further comments at this time, but would be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Sawyer. Is the applicant or applicant's agent here wishing to speak on this? And I believe we do have someone. 
Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of committee. My name is Andrea Patterson. I'm a land use planner at Denton's Canada LLP, and we act for CN Rail. Um, all I'd really like to say at this point, I think Mr. Soja covered a lot of the points, um, and I'd like to thank staff for their thorough review of this matter. Uh, we've reviewed the staff report, and we're in agreement with all of the conditions that are being proposed. Okay, thank you very much. Is there anyone else here wishing to speak in support of this application? Is there anyone wishing to speak in opposition to this application? Uh, yes, there's someone. Okay, would you bring them in, please? Hi, can you guys hear me or see me? Mm-hmm. Hi, um, I'm using my I'm using my child's iPad. My name is Mark Warren. I live at 105 McPherson Avenue, Toronto, Ontario. Uh, my postal code is M5R1W7. Um, I am the purchaser of the separate lot or pro separate lot, hopefully. Um, and I just wanted to uh, reiterate that uh, I've been a uh, resident, or a, at the very least, he's over a resident. Although I spend uh, you know a good uh, portion of my time, probably eight to ten months a year, uh, living in Torrance. Um, so I'm extremely, uh, uh, aware of, uh, you know, uh, building within, uh, you know, the goals of the community. And, um, I would like to, uh, you know, just let the committee recognize that, uh, um, you know, my proposed storage uh, garage is simply, uh, you know, it's simply for my own private use. And I have no intentions of uh, turning a business or, uh, causing excessive, excessive noise or truck use or anything like that. There's been a little bit of chatter on social media around this. So I just wanted to, um, let everybody know that, uh, you know, I plan to build within, um, you know, the, you know, the, the absolute minimalistic, uh, standards to achieve my goals. So, and thank you very much for my, uh, or, you know, for taking the time to, uh, to review this today. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone else? No? Okay. okay. Are, there, are there questions from the members? No questions? Moved by Member Quinn, second by Member Creaser, be it resolved and sent to be granted for application P 11621ML. Canadian National Railroad Company providing following conditions are fulfilled. One, a registered description deed of the severed lot and any required right of way be submitted to the Secretary Treasurer along with a registered copy of the reference plan. Two, that satisfactory confirmation be received that the properties have merged as a result in the general lot configuration shown as part of this application. Three, that cash in lieu of parkland be dedicated to the township the amount of 5% of the assessed value of the newly created lot or the entire subject land, whichever is less. Four, the confirmation be received that the township is satisfied that the severed lot is satisfactory for on-site sewage as both to the satisfaction of the township. And four, that uh, confirmation be received that the entrance permit and the, to the severed lot is available from the township public works department as may be required for an entrance along Torrance Road and Six, that the zoning approval be obtained to prohibit habitable uh, development in the separate plot. Okay. And uh, are there any questions or comments? All those in favor. And that is carried. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. And the next application is A121 Muskoka World Peace Consulting Corporation, and that is Ms. Walker. Thank you very much, Chair Edwards. The next application to be heard is minor variance application A-100-21 in the name of Muskoka World Peace. The subject lands are known municipally as Three Ferndale Road. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plan on page 106 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is summarized as follows. The applicant proposes to construct a five-story mixed-use building with associated stairs and underground parking. 
The proposed building is to be 54 feet in height where 40 feet is permitted. The relief requested is 14 feet. The proposed set of stairs is to be six feet, six feet sorry, from the westerly side lot line where 10 feet is required. The requested variance is four feet. The proposed mixed use building is to be 10 feet from the lot line, which abuts Medora Street, where 25 feet is required. The requested variance is 15 feet. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 10 days in advance and four submissions have been received to date. Comments have been received from Nick Snyder, the Township's Chief Building Official, and Tim Zopko, the Township's Public Works Technician. These comments were circulated to committee prior to today's meeting and can be read in full at the request of committee. After these comments were circulated, the following submissions were received. The first is from the District of Muskoka. The district has commented that regarding the size and location of the retaining wall running parallel to Muskoka Road 118, a roadway occupation permit will be required if there will be any works that spill out onto the road allowance. A letter of support was also received from Paul Studholm um, and an address was not included on the submission. Staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration. Staff have recommended that the variance for an increase in height be denied. Staff have no further comments at this time, but I'm happy to assist committee with any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Walker. And is the applicant applicant's agent here wishing to speak on this? Yes. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can. Uh, thank you, Daniel Bornstein, Box 429, Port Carling, Ontario, P0B1J0. Thank you so much to uh, committee chair and committee uh, planning department. I will be handing over uh, further discussion to uh, Peter, who is the planner, and Chris, who is the architect on this project. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good morning. Can everybody hear me? Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, the committee, staff, and members of the public. My name is Peter Madalena. Address is 3 Rymer, R-Y-M-E-R, Road, Toronto, Ontario, M9, C as in Cat, 3 Victor 1. So um, I'm a professional planner, registered professional planner, and I've uh, been brought on to this project uh, to review the report uh, produced by the Township of Muskoka Lakes Planning Department uh, regarding the minor request, uh, the minor variance request for 3 Ferndale Road. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank the Planning Department for uh, the overall support and uh, positive feedback uh, through the preparation of this application. However, um, given the concerns expressed in the report uh, that mainly relate to height and the relationship to scale, massing, and streetscape, uh, we'd like to go over a few items in a little bit more detail to articulate how we've uh, mitigated against some of these concerns. So I have a few points I'd like to speak to. The first point is, um, I think it is important to note that the, uh, the terrace level, which is the top level, will be set back uh, from both the front of the building along Medora Street and the rear of the building. Uh, so the purpose of the setback is to minimize the height impact of the building at street level and create a more pedestrian friendly uh, streetscape and scale. I have some experience with uh, various mitigation measures and urban design best practices, uh, such as setting back um, higher stories by what is known as uh, an angular plane. And typical guidelines for angular plane is about 45 degrees, but on this design it's uh, 12 degrees. So that results in a greater setback and this setback minimizes any negative impacts on um, scale, massing, and the streetscape. So with this uh, setback in place, uh, the, the height of the building that you would actually see from uh, street level would be approximately 44 feet. And I have two images that I'd like to share to further illustrate this because it's a little bit technical, but um, Caitlin, if you're able to put on slide one for me, I'd appreciate that on the screen. We're just working on that now. Okay, thanks. Um, when you see slide one uh, pop up, you'll see this is going to be a cross section of the building, and it's the east elevation. And uh, the the image shows the street frontage of the building facade would be 44 feet high, 
And the rear of the building also includes a setback at the top level, um, which is also resulting in a facade of 44 feet high. So you can see that here in the image that uh, Caitlin has put up for you. Um, the front of the building would uh, rise approximately 44 feet high. And then the diagonal red dashed line is what the 12 degree angular plane is, which shows the setback of the uh, terrace level um, from the facade. Um, another image, if you can go to slide two for me, please. So this image depicts the massing of uh, the terrace floor, the area that's in red and it provides an indication of the depth of the setback from the building frontage. So the setback from Medora Street is 48 feet, four inches. So in addition, uh, staff have noted in the report uh, that when the building is viewed from the low point of Medora Street or in traveling from east to west, the proposed increased height will result in uh, significantly uh, greater visual impact. So Caitlin, if you can go to slide three, if you look at this slide here, uh, this is a modeling, a rendered model, 3D model that's been done. It um, is conceptual at this point in time. However, I do think it uh, shows what we're trying to uh, say here with regards to the view. So when the, the building is viewed from the low end of Medora Street, it's our opinion that the visual impact of the height will be significantly reduced by the setback of the terrace level and also the existing building. The uh, setback of the terrace level will reduce the overall massing of the building. It, it's going to create a more pedestrian friendly streetscape and scale and uh, result in mitigating the visual impact when viewing the building from the low end of Medora Street. Now, if you can go to slide four, there's just two other quick measurements I want you to take note of. Um, so when, with regards to height, uh, when, when taken from the pedestrian point of view on Medora Street, at the east end or the low end of uh, Medora, the height is 38.6 feet. And then at the west side, so the top end of Medora Street, the height is 24.1 feet. Now, another item I'd like to quickly speak to is that staff had concerns about the potential visual and privacy impacts on the residential uses along Ferndale Road. So with regards to concerns about potential uh, visual and privacy impacts on the residential uses along Ferndale, uh, we're of the opinion that due to the large setback from Ferndale Road, uh, which is greater than 123 feet, and with the existing tree canopy, the visual and privacy impacts can be considered to be low. Um, in addition, the terrace level will act as a visual shield from any activity on the terraces themselves. Also, the owner was required to leave seven trees, but instead we'll be leaving 15 mature trees. If you go to slide five, so uh, the image depicted here is the site plan view. Uh, so the red arrow, if you take note of the distance from the rear of the building to Ferndale Road, uh, this distance is greater than 123 feet. And the existing tree canopy will provide a visual buffer in order to mitigate against any privacy impacts. Next point I'd like to speak to are some staff uh, concerns uh, the uh, proposed building will have a larger scale and height than the surrounding buildings and structures, which would negatively impact uh, the character of the area. So we just take a look at slide six. So this, this image, again, the 3D model of the proposed building in relation to the existing building. Although taller, uh, the massing and scale of the building is mitigated by the setback of the terrace floor. In addition, the setback of the existing building in relation to the proposed allows for a gradual transition in height and mitigates against the more abrupt height differential between the two buildings. The uh, community improvement plan does recognize that taller buildings may be appropriate on corner sites such as this one and the transition from the existing building by both the setback of the terrace floor and floors two to four minimizes the massing and the overall scale of the building. The report also notes that the community improvement plan recommends that the massing of larger buildings to be divided up through architectural articulation, varying, varying setbacks and roof lines. So once again, we point out to the committee that the building design does include architectural articulation provided by the setback of floors two to four, the 48.4 foot setback of the terrace level, 
and also the design of the balconies will provide additional articulation. Um, staff also notes that the community improvement plan states that a consistent height and mass of buildings along the street edge ensures visual continuity and maintains the pedestrian scale of the street. If we can just go to slide seven, this is another uh, conceptual image that shows also the building at the uh, top end of uh, the existing building at the top end of Medora. So this image uh, just shows the, the relationship of height and mass of the buildings along Medora Street. Uh, here you'll notice uh, an appealing transition from one end of the building to the other, which maintains the pedestrian scale at the street. The impact of height is greatly mitigated and removed by the setback of the terrace floor, as mentioned. And also the terrace, terrace floor provides additional amenity space and is an access point for the units below. Further, the building will create a properly scaled pedestrian focused streetscape with appropriate landscaping and features to ensure a positive pedestrian experience. We're also using the natural topography to blend into the environment. The change in grade allows the building to have far less impact on the surroundings. And also here, I'd like to point out that the new building footprint is 960 square feet smaller than the approved building. Just a couple more points here. Uh, staff also uh, note in the report that a common Muskoka style includes traditional cladding materials, wood structures, um, varying variety of pitch roof styles, earth tones, and porches and terraces. So if we go to slide eight, the, the cladding material chosen um, for the building is going to be set on a diagonal to provide a visual appeal and will showcase appropriate earth tones in keeping with the Muskoka style. The setback of the top of the floor will result in large terraces at the front of the building, along with smaller terraces at the rear. Slide nine, please. And uh, this, this image here just speaks to compatibility uh, to show how the development will be compatible with surrounding buildings and is in keeping with the Muskoka style. Another item we'd like to note with regard to the terraces is that the current approved site plan includes one large 8,400 square foot rooftop deck while the new plan will provide individual terraces that are in keeping with the community improvement plan. Further, we're not compromising the top floors in order to provide largely decorative roofs and gables, but rather we're providing usable amenity space. If you go to slide 10, please. So you'll see here the, the, the smaller uh, private terraces is a better option than the one large rooftop deck, which could uh, accommodate up to 300 people and the associated issues that could arise from that could arise from uh, larger gatherings on top of the roof. So after review of the community improvement plan, uh, we're of the opinion that the design meets the overall spirit and intent of the plan. Uh, key notables include that uh, the plan wants to ensure the majority of growth is focused in urban areas, taller buildings in strategic, strategic locations, residential above commercial, residential growth in core commercial areas, rooftop decking, multi-unit buildings, and an increase in density in the commercial core. Also, if you go to slide 11, um, there's an art installation concept is planned for the parking lot island and will add further character to this building as in, and it's also in keeping with uh, the community improvement plan. Another um, thing to note within the CIP is that it seeks to identify opportunities for intensification, infill, and redevelopment within the existing boundaries and ensure that opportunities for current and future residents to live in urban centers by providing a choice of alternative forms of housing. So this development is given the opportunity for development in the urban area when uh, we're all aware that lakefront properties are limited. So this will give uh, people the opportunity to enjoy a new urban lifestyle within the community. So in summary, I want to end off by saying that the CIP also encourages integrating the existing topography and natural features into the development and minimize alteration to both, and that there are trade-offs to be considered in development, particularly when it comes to opportunities to provide housing. We are of the opinion, and is also reflected in the staff report, that the positive attributes of the building and its design provide a viable opportunity to provide housing. Finally, we are in keeping with the township's official plan by contributing to the intensification, infill, and redevelopment 
and our incorporation of both commercial and residential uses is in line with the township's official plan policies. We are of the opinion that the application meets all the criteria to grant this minor variance and will help to create a new vibrant commercial core in Port Carling. We thank you for all the work on this and we would appreciate the approval of the application. And uh, to conclude, I'd like to thank the chair, the committee, the staff and members of the public and for the support and positive feedback uh, from the planning department. So thank you very much for your time today. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else here wishing to speak in support of this application? Okay. Hello? Yes. Oh, hi. I'm uh, Christopher Walker. I'm the architect. Okay. My address is 87 Brickworks Lane in Toronto, M6N 5H8. Okay, now you're going to have to make it quick because you've already taken over 10 minutes up on this. Uh, and we normally allow five minutes for an application. Oh, okay. Well, um, I'm, I'm the architect and uh, I was brought onto the project at the request of the planning department to put together a comprehensive drawing package for the town's review. When I started my involvement, Dan, the owner, and I went back to the CIP to make sure the proposal reflected the town's goals. In so doing, we made a few revisions to the uh, approved SBA, and I'll just go through that. Um, we did reduce the footprint from 9960 square feet down to 9,000. We increased the setbacks from Medora from 10 feet to 12 at the west corner, 14 at the east corner. Uh, we developed two apartment types with and without balconies on Medora to articulate the elevation. Uh, we also increased the height of the commercial ground floor from nine feet to the recommended 14 feet, which added five feet to the approved SPA plan. Uh, we added an access level to the roof terraces to have individual terraces for each apartment rather than one large roof terrace as in the approved SPA. This reduces overlook by having all the terraces face Medora with only one terrace facing the adjacent West property. We also looked at transitioning the building and we find the proposal to be uh, sensitive to the streetscape by being lower than the building to the West and also by nestling the building into the slope of Medora Street, the height is actually only perceived as 24 foot one at the Southwest corner. Lastly, uh, the terrace access level was set back considerably from Medora Street to mitigate height impacts. Uh, we feel the proposal is a positive development for the town of Port Car Carling by intensifying a corner lot and we appreciate your approval on this. Okay, thank you very much. Is there anyone else here wishing to speak in support of this application? Anyone in opposition? Okay, uh, questions from the members? Any, any questions? Um, I'm not quite sure where to start here. Well, Start at the beginning and finish at the end. How's that? Um, the the applicants have, have presented a very positive case. Um, the uh, but I do have concerns and 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 I'm not completely convinced that I am ready to disagree with uh, staff recommendations. Uh, some of the pictures presented in the in the staff report show. Uh, show the height of the building, you know, looking straight on, not from a low angle down on Medora Street looking up, which would actually sort of minimize uh, the impact of it. And it's quite a bit higher than the adjacent building. Um, the measurements referenced by the applicant were all to the floor level, but in fact, there's another four feet of, of, uh, of the balcony. Uh, the, the, uh, the edging around the balcony adds another four feet. So. In my mind, you've got to include that in the visual impact. Um, uh, I, I'm a bit torn and I'm interested in what the other uh, committee members have to say. Okay, uh, yes, Member Quinn. I'll go with Ms. Member Quinn first and then Member Creaser. 
you know, one of the tests of a variance is whether it's minor and, and they're asking for a 35% uh, increase on height on, uh, on a very large building uh, that's, that's uh, in everybody's drive and forefront. It's not hidden away. So I can't support it because I don't believe it's minor. And uh, I mean, maybe they could bring the retail level down to 11 or 12 foot ceiling and lose one floor up the building and bring it into compliance with or closer to compliance where it becomes a minor variance. But today it's not minor in my opinion. Okay, thank you. Member Creaser. I'm in complete agreement with Member Quinn that a 35% increase in that essentially allows for another floor is not a minor variance. Okay, anyone else? Sure. Uh, <laughs> yes, Member Lisa uh, Green. Yeah, the building already on the corner. Uh, for a lot of us driving by um, for several years has been a bit of an eyesore. Everybody wondered what the heck was going in there and what it was. Um, you know, I, I like modern design, uh, so I could tolerate it, but I have to admit that this building is again taller. And um, just generally speaking, like I agree with Joe that it's, it's a major thing that's going in there. Um, and I'm a bit concerned about pedestrian safety. Like I have um, walked uh, you know, a lot between say the Shell station when I've had car trouble and the town or the IGA or, or the VET, the Port Carling VET. And it's just not safe anymore. And um, coming out of the IGA when the light works, that's safe. But in the winter time when it's not working, it's terrifying sometimes to get in and out. And I just sort of feel that people have to start looking. I didn't see in the rendering any sidewalk. I, I, I could see that the basement, um, the lowest floor had a sidewalk where the hill is, but for the streetscape, there was nothing. I'm surprised even that the district allows this when it is a highway. And it's just the whole of Port Carling is getting too fast. And this is just going to make it worse. And the terracing, it doesn't impress me the 12 degrees. It doesn't accomplish anything. I, I agree with Rob that we're looking at the balconies and whatever happens in behind the terrace. Uh, so like in terms of the building, so be it. But I, I can see the balconies. And uh, it's not in keeping with Muskoka. I, I, I think the rendering needs to be improved somehow to... Uh, illustrate how that fits with the rest of the town because I don't think it does. That's my opinion. Uh, thank you very much. I guess I will ask the applicant or applicant's agent, would you like this deferred so that you can uh, rework it and come back? Uh, I cannot support uh, 54, uh, 54 feet as well. And that we, we do have our, our limits. Uh, you should be able to work uh, in that. There is already is an approved site plan for this uh, application uh, that was submitted before. So, uh, you know, this is a rework and I cannot support it uh, as well. So would you just like your other two variances and then get down to the 40 feet or how would you like to uh, proceed? I'm, uh, I'm gonna speak for Daniel and he, he can correct me if, um... He wants to go otherwise, but I'd ask the committee to uh, to make your ruling, and we'll go from there. Okay. So, I am going to read the resolution. Uh, I uh, and I'll ask Mr. Pink. Can we make um, take the, the first one out to, to 54 feet of height and give him the the the, uh, the stair six feet from the interior lot line and 10 feet from the the, the district road. See, I, I don't agree with number uh, with C. I Pardon? think that I, I don't think I agree with a 10 foot setback from a public road. Okay, no, this is fine. So we're just going to turn the. Uh, do you want everybody to, to turn the whole thing down then? Uh, and that. I see a nod from, from uh, Member Creaser. Uh, Member uh, Bosworth. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think we should be uh, proving pieces of it. Okay. Okay, then I will read the, the resolution. 
Moved by Member Bosenworth, second by Member Teresa, be it resolved the application A-121 Muskoka World Peace Consulting Corp to permit the construction of a five-story mixed-use building with associated stairs and underground parking and, is, and hereby approved with the following variances being granted. One, to permit a mixed-use building to be 54 feet in height. Two, to permit a set of stairs to be six feet from the westerly interior side lot line, and three, to permit a, a mixed-use building to a setback of 10 feet from the lot line from a district road. These variants are, are granted as shown on the plan attached to the notice of decision. If approved, this shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. Okay, so I will ask, is anyone in favor of that? All those opposed? And that is defeated. I think at this time we'll take a quick uh, five minute uh, comfort break.
That's better. <laughs> okay, can we call the meeting back to order then, please? And the uh, next application is A10121. And that's the hand. Thank you, Chair Edwards. The next application to be heard is minor variance application A10121 in the name of Ranahan. The subject lands are known municipally as 1147 Butterfly Road. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plan on page 140 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of this application is as follows. The applicants propose to construct a two-story garage with storage in the upper level. Relief is requested from the maximum permitted lot coverage, which for lots with frontage on Butterfly Lake is 8%. The requested variance is 204 square feet or 0.7% over what is permitted for a total lot coverage of 8.7%. Relief is also requested from the maximum permitted height requirement of 20 feet for an accessory building. The requested variance is four feet for a total height of 24 feet for the proposed garage. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 13 days in advance of the meeting and two submissions were received. Comments have been received from Nick Snyder, the township chief building official, and Tim Sopko, the township's public works technician, both stating that they have no objection to the application. Staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration and have no objection. If committee is considering approval, staff recommend the following conditions. That the existing storage shed and covered wood rack be removed as intended, and that a site plan agreement be entered into along with securities for plantings to revegetate the shoreline buffer and to ensure existing vegetation is retained. Staff have no further comments at this time and are happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Crowder. And is the applicant or applicant's agent here wishing to speak on this? Okay. Okay. Muted. Pardon? Yeah. He, he might not know he's muted. Okay. Good morning, sir. Okay, thank you. Yes. We have your, your name and address and postal code. And if you'd like, you can turn your, your video on as well. Okay. There we go. Sorry, I'm not very used to these types of meetings. Uh, Good morning to everyone. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Jim Ranahan, and uh, my address is 504 Wellington County Road 7 in Elora, NOB 1SO. Um, I, I'm not sure if that was everything that you asked me to say. <laughs> Thank you again for uh, allowing me uh, this opportunity. Uh, my wife and I have been uh, Butterfly Lake cottages, cottagers for uh, our entire married life of 30, 32 years now. You know, I grew up uh, Butterfly Lake. My grandparents built the cottage in 67. Uh, we purchased the, pro the, the property in 99. Um, as we're starting to mature in years, uh, we're thinking of uh, spending more time at the cottage uh, with a growing family. We need some more space for storage, which is the uh, reason for the second story on the garage, combined with uh, trying to uh, move away from burning fossil fuels. We intend to, to install um, uh, uh, solar panels on the roof, which is uh, the uh, necessitates the, the height uh, variance so that we can get the proper angle for the, the solar panels on the southwest side, which would be on the road side uh, of the property. Uh, so the garage has a, a multitude of purposes uh, because we want to spend more time there in the winter and so on. We wanted to be able to, to, to put our vehicles inside and store our boat and so on. And the second story 
uh, will be storage and again, allow us to put uh, solar panels on, on the roof to move uh, for, uh, away from fossil fuels to green energy. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, sir. Is there anyone, anyone else here who is speaking support? Anyone in opposition? Are there questions from the members? Uh, yes, Mr. Member Bottomsworth. Um, I don't have any objections to the um, application in principle. We, we These are fairly common applications asking for 24 feet. Um, I do object to the porch on the second floor, though, because that's an attribute that is normally attributed to living space, not storage space. So I would easily approve this if the, uh, if the deck was removed. I see. Yeah, and that's that's possible. The deck on the on the lake side was an afterthought. Uh, again, going with the Muskoka theme, we felt that architecturally it was um, it looked nice. Um, the the property is such that it's well back from the lake. That uh, if you look on the the diagrams, it's it's, it's out at the road. But that deck space with the uh, coming off the stairs to the second story, which is storage, that deck space was would have just been an additional uh, space where you can view the. The, uh, the lake, the, the, the nature from the outside. That was the reason for it. But again, it was more of an architectural addition just from uh, the idea of keeping a, with a Muskoka theme. Anyone else? Great to comment on anything. Other comment? Yes. Sure, sure. My, my concern wasn't architectural. My concern was ultimate use. And the current applicant, I'm sure, will maintain it and use it for storage. But it's uh, few, future owners that we worry about. And um, so if, we're, uh, if, if I don't have anybody else on the committee agreeing with my suggestion, then I would at least uh, take the staff recommendations that we uh, uh, do what we've often done with uh, these spaces that, that could be adapted to living space. And when we register it on the, um, we make some form of registration. It's in the report here. I just find it. Okay, uh, member, member Kreese, did you have a comment? I'm in agreement with uh, member Bosomworth to maybe have the condition that it's not living space. Personally, the deck will probably never be used. I, as a person who designs, people always have this idea to have a second floor deck and we'll go up and use it. And then it rarely gets used, especially if it's not living space that you're never gonna be up there other than, oh, I gotta store something here. Oh, look, I can walk out on the deck. So I think it's a bit of not required on your design, but I would be fine with just the condition and the condition will address any future use. David, would you like to add that then, please? Was it registered on title that it has to be storage? Uh, Member Quinn. I, I you know what, um, I, I think that, um, that Bosomsworth was right about the removal of that, if we can come to an agreement on that. Uh, yes, Member Grogan Green. I can't hear you. I agree with both Member Quinn and uh, Member Bosomworth that the balcony should come off um, because obviously, oh. over time, you know, things, it's hard for us to be sure what something is used for, uh, you know, and I think putting it on title and also getting rid of what appears to be a habitable space is a good idea. Okay, Mr. Ranahan, uh, would you like to comment on that then? That's would you fine. remove that? Pardon? Yeah, sorry, yes, sir. We could, uh, we'll just remove the deck. It was a, uh, as I said, it was an afterthought anyway, and, and I agree oh. with the member that said um, it probably would never be used. <laughs> we just thought it looked nice. So I could easily okay. remove it. That's not a problem. Okay, so you'll take that off and, and uh, I guess you don't need the glass sliding doors then. Sorry, pardon me? I, then I, I guess you don't need the glass sliding doors. You just put a window in there. That's correct, yeah. Okay, so we're, we're, we're taking the deck off and the, and the glass sliding doors. 
and we'll change that to a window. Okay, and thank you. Shall we include a, a site plan agreement confirming permitted use or register on title as well, which is what we have been doing fairly consistently in this committee? Mm -hmm. David, what would you? I've added, I've added that. That was the first request. Okay, so yeah, it'll be site plan no, approval on that. Just so no. future, future owners are aware. Yep. Okay, so moved by member Grogan Green, seconded by member Quinn, be it resolved that application A-101-21 Ranahan to permit the construction of a two-story garage with storage in the upper level is hereby approved with the following variances being granted. One, to permit a lot coverage of 2,418 square feet or 8.7 of the entire lot. Two, to permit an accessory building to be 24 feet in height. And these variants shown on the, sorry, these variants are granted, shown on plan attached to the notice of decision and hereby subject to the following conditions. One, that an existing storage shed and covered wood rack be removed and to stipulate that no habitable space is permitted in the garage. This agreement shall be registered on title and three, that a sun deck and sliding door not be permitted in the second story. Uh, and that two, that a site plan agreement be entered into along with securities for planting revegetation of the shoreline to ensure existing vegetation is retained. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. And uh, all those in favor? And that is carried. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. And the next one is uh, A1020 Myers, and that is uh, Ms. Walker. Thank you, Chair Edwards. The next application to be heard is minor variance application A-10-22 in the name of Myers. The subject lands are known municipally as 1016 Kimberly Point Road, Unit 3. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plan on page 160 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is summarized as follows. The applicants propose to construct a new dock. Relief is requested from the minimum lot frontage requirements for an existing lot of record being 100 feet. The subject property has 89 feet of frontage, sorry, 98 feet of frontage. Relief is also requested from the minimum side yard setback for the dock. The proposed dock is to be stepped back 17 feet from the southerly lot line projection where 30 feet is required. The requested variance is 13 feet. Please note that committee approved minor variance A-37-21 in August 2021 to permit a dwelling addition and a new dock on an undersized lot. The proposed dock location has now been revised due to shoreline conditions. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 12 days in advance and three submissions have been received to date. Comments have been received from Nick Snyder, the Township's Chief, build Chief Building Official, and Tim Sopko, the Township's Public Works Technician. A letter of support was also received by Anne and Andres Tembekalos, neighboring property owners to the south. These comments were circulated to committee prior to today's meeting and can be read in full at the request of committee. Staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration and have no objection. If committee is considering approval, staff recommend the following conditions. That a satisfactory site plan agreement be entered into to confirm the retention of existing trees and to require additional plantings if necessary. Staff have no further comments at this time and I'm happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you very much, Ms. Walker. And uh, is the applicant or applicant's agent here wishing to speak on this? No one? For or against? 
Okay. Oh, he is now. Okay, thank you. Thanks for pointing that out, though. Uh, moved by uh, Member Grogan Green. Be it. Pardon? Who put their hand up? I'm sorry, I missed that. Oh, there's a member of the public. Okay, can you bring them in, please? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can, sir. I'm sorry, okay. I was a little asleep at the wheel here. I, I thought I was in the meeting, but I, I had to log in. Um, okay. I am the agent. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, and you can turn your video on if you like. Uh, yes, I will. There we go. Good. Sorry. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, my name is uh, Jim Freeman. I'm acting agent uh, for my wife, Donna Myers. I'm at 80 Perry Street, Woodstock, Ontario, N4S3C5. Um, we had applied for this uh, uh, application last year, and we didn't, uh, hindsight being 2020, we realized the spot we had uh, been approved for was not suitable to put a dock. So uh, we put us in a bit of a bind. So that's why we're reapplying for some uh, relief here. Okay, thank you. Any other, other comments on that? Okay. Is there anyone else here for or against? No? Okay, I'll turn to any uh, questions from the members. I see none. Okay. Oh, oh. Yeah, I was just going to say, Chair, that uh, I, I, I have no issues with this, particularly when we have uh, support from the neighbor to the south. Where okay, oh, that's fine. I'm most closest to. Thank you. Moved by Member Grogan Green, second by Member Creaser, be it resolved that application A1022 Myers to permit the construction of a new dock is hereby approved with the following variances being granted. One, to permit a dock on an undersized lot. Two, to permit a dock to be set back 17 feet from the southerly side lot line projection. These variances are granted as shown on the plan attached to the notice of decision and are subject to the following condition. One, that a satisfactory site plan agreement be entered into to confirm the retention of existing trees and to require additional plantings if necessary. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? That is Kerry. Very good, thank you. And the next application is A1122 Fulton, and that is Ms. Darling. Thank you, Chair Edwards. The next application to be heard is minor variance application A-11-22 in the name of Fulton. The subject property is known municipally as 1024 Neils Road. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plan and drawings on page 178 to 181 of the agenda package. The purpose and the effect of the application is summarized as follows. The applicants proposed to construct a dwelling addition consisting of a screened porch being added to an existing porch. Relief is requested from the minimum interior side yard setback requirement of 15 feet. The proposed screened porch is 8.5 feet from the southwesterly side lot line. Variance requested is 6.5 feet. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 13 days in advance and two submissions have been received to date. Submissions were received by the Township's Public Works Technician, Tim Sopko, and the Townsh Township's Chief Building Official, Nick Snyder. These comments were circulated prior to today's meeting. Staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration and have recommended that this application be approved. Staff have no further comments at this time and are happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Darling. I see the agent is here. Good morning, Ms. Lidger. 
Good morning, Chair Edwards, and good morning, committee and staff. Uh, Terry Ledger, agent for the applicant, 167 Medora Street, for Carling P0B1J0. And just so staff knows and committee, so I don't have to keep saying my address and name, the next three applications are, are, are all mine. Um, this particular one is a, a six foot addition to an existing screen porch. Um, it looks like in the renderings that it's the whole screen porch, but they're actually just adding on one section. Um, and I'd just like to note that the adjacent property is also owned by the Fultons and is currently vacant. And then it's the CN Rail one. So we hope not to interfere with anybody. So I'm here for any other questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there questions from the members? Seeing none. Moved by member Quinn, second by member Bosomworth, be it resolved that application A1122 Fulton to permit the construction of a dwelling addition consisting of a screened in porch being added to an existing porch is hereby approved with the following conditions being granted. One, to permit a screened porch addition to be 8.5 feet from the southwesterly interior side line, plot line, sorry. This variance is granted as shown on a plan attached to the notice of decision. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. Any questions, comments? All those in favor? That's carried. Okay, and the next application is A1222, and that's Ms. Walker. Thank you, Chair Edwards. The next application to be heard is minor variance application A-11-22 in the name of El Media. The subject property is known municipally as 1158 Greenwood Point Road, Unit 15. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plan on page 199 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is summarized as follows. The applicant proposes to remove a portion of an existing boathouse and pump house and construct a sleeping cabin. Relief is requested from the total lot coverage and lot coverage within 200 feet of the high water mark. 10.4% lot coverage is proposed where 10% is permitted. The variance requested is 0.4% over what is permitted. The relief is also requested from the minimum interior side yard setback, the proposed sleeping cabin is to be 10 feet from the southeasterly lot line where 15 feet is required. The requested variance is five feet. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 13 days in advance and three submissions have been received to date. Comments have been received by Nick Snyder, the Township's Chief Building Official, and Tim Sopko, the Township's Public Works Technician. A letter of support was also received by Mary Ellen Min McTire, neighboring property owner to the southeast. These comments were circulated to committee prior to today's meeting and can be read in full at the request of committee. Staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration and have no objection. If committee is considering approval, staff recommend the following condition, that the existing pump house and a portion of the proposed boathouse be removed as intended. Staff have no further comments at this time, but are happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, the agent is here. Now, do we need the uh, address and everything again since she's already given it to us on the last one or for no, technicalities? Yeah, I think we're okay. But we're okay. Okay, <laughs> we'll let you off the hook. I don't know why, but <laughs> go ahead, Terry. Thank you. Um, so I just wanted to note that the uh, uh, portion of the boathouse was actually removed quite some time ago uh, for our. Uh, but during our boathouse permitting and building. So that's completed. And uh, the pump house will be removed shortly. They're just doing the cottage renovation. So the new water system is going in, then they can remove that. And the neighbor that uh, uh, wrote a letter in support um, was approached by uh, my clients uh, prior to anything happening. So they're the most affected neighbor. And uh, so good neighborly duty. Um, and that's it. I, if you have any other questions, I'm thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else wishing to speak in support of this application? Anyone in opposition? 
No? Okay. Are there questions from the members? Seeing none. Moved by Member Creaser, second by Member Quinn, be it resolved that application A1222 Aluminia to permit the construction of a new sleeping cabin is hereby approved with the following variances being granted. One, to permit a lot coverage of 4,159 square feet or 10.4% of the entire lot. Two, to permit a lot coverage 4,190, sorry, 4,159 square feet or 10.4% within 200 feet of the high water mark, and three, to permit a sleeping cabin to be set back 10 feet from the southeasterly interior lot line. These variances are granted as shown on the plan attached to the notice of the decision and are subject to the following condition. One, that an existing pump house and a portion of the boathouse be removed as intended. This approval shall remain in effect from three years from the date of decision. Any questions or comments? All those in favor. Thank you very much. And it makes it so much easier when you get the neighbors on board. So thank you for that. And the next application is A1322 White. Thank you, Chair Edwards. Right, yeah, you're starting. Right. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Chair Edwards. The next application to be heard is minor variance application A-13-22 in the name of White. The subject property is known municipally as 1095 Brackenridge Center Road. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plan and drawings on page 218 to 225 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is summarized as follows. The applicant proposed to construct a single story dwelling and a single story garage. Relief is requested for the minimum front yard setback of 50 feet. The proposed dwelling and garage are to be 29.5 feet from Brackenridge Center Road. The variance requested is 20.5 feet. Relief is also requested for the minimum interior side yard setback of 20 feet. The proposed dwelling is to be 9.5 feet from the easterly lot line. And the variance requested is 10.5 feet. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 10 days in advance and four submissions have been received to date. Submissions were received from the Township's Public Works Technician, Tim Sopko, and the Township's Chief Building Official, Nick Snyder. The third submission is from an area neighbor, Roman, Roma Cassian, and the fourth submission is from another area neighbor, Tom Birkin. These comments were submitted to committee prior to today's meeting. Staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration and have recommended that this application be approved. Staff have no further comments at this time and are happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you. Okay. I think the applicant agent is here. Yes, I am. Thank you. And it's, uh, I see my sister. <laughs> so she's uh, the, a neighbor, the adjacent property owner affected. So that's kind of cool. But anyway, um, so the, uh, the setback from the road is actually because there's a, um, a natural uh, drainage area to the rear of the building area. So they're trying to avoid that uh, water. I don't know if it runs all year or not, but it's, it's certainly an issue. And so that's why they wanted to move it closer to the road and, uh, and to the neighboring side yard line, but I'll uh, let anybody else speak and I'm here for any uh, questions. Thank you. Okay, is there anyone else wishing to speak in support of this application? Anyone in opposition to this application? Yes. Okay. Yep. Yes, could we have your, your name and address? <clears throat> My name is Penta Ledger. Um, I am with my husband, Tom Birkin. He is the owner of the property. We did submit a letter outlining some of our concerns and that we would not like the variance, the minor variance, uh, to go ahead for the reasons in the letter. I don't know if I need to outline this again. So I, I need your 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 full mailing at your name full mailing address and postal code please. 
Okay, uh, Penta Ledger, 1109 Rock and Rake Centre Road, Port Carling, Ontario, P0B1J0. Okay, thank you very much. Is there anyone else uh, here to speak in opposition to this application? No? Okay, don't see anyone. Uh, I, yes, Mr. Member Quinn, you have a, a question. I, I would like to hear Penta express her concerns. Okay. Yes, go ahead then. Yep, so part of the concern really is that um, when looking at the review that was the site review that came through, um, one of the things was that because the like the dwelling on 1109 is 300 feet away from the proposed minor variance, um, that was one of the reasons that it was to be approved. So because 1109 dwelling is in the center-ish of that one, then it's okay that the other dwelling come over. And it has 325 feet of frontage and over 21 acres. And we just feel like this is, there's enough space there that, that the dwelling could be built within established guidelines. Um, in the letter, I noted that one of the tests for a minor variance is that it's minor in nature, but again, minor to whom, right? This, this decision that's being made now will be a decision that's the best of my lifetime. So, you know, and it says 9.5, the, the building is to be 9.5 feet from um, the lot line but then it's another five foot ask at 10 feet. And does that include an overhang? Like, or is it to the edge of the building? So all of these things I'm not sure of. And if I'm not sure, then, and, and I also feel that it's not necessary. That's why I would prefer not to have this minor variance go through. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, I will have the next one, and then I will let the agent uh, have a rebuttal. Okay, Mr. Birkin. He might have technical difficulties. Hello? Oh, Hello, yes. Will you say your name, address, and post a code, please? It's Tom Birkin. I live at uh, 1109 Brackenridge Center Road, P0B1J0. Okay. And I am against what uh, is going on here is uh, prior of being a builder for 33 years and seeing what the site is uh, totally cleared off there. Uh, it looks to me that there is no reason that uh, we need to move this building that far forward along with the fact of uh, having well over 300 foot frontage um, there, as you can see on some of the pictures that there is no reason for that building to approach our sideline um, of another 10 feet. Uh, setbacks are set for a reason and I certainly feel that this is a good reason. There's plenty of room to the west uh, to move and keep that building at the 20 foot setback, along with the uh, setback from the road frontage. I also uh, taken consideration of uh, what the potential, uh, what they want to use this building for, not just a uh, living, but to, uh, um, from what the owner had mentioned is uh, making guitars. So the noise of planers and CNC machines uh, should come into effect also. Um, I hope you can uh, consider where we're coming from and uh, uh, grant us our uh, privilege of uh, denying this. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, and there's no one else? Is there? Okay, to bring them in, please.
Hello? No, uh, so are, are they coming in? They're having problems, yeah. They're having problems? We'll just wait a second, see if we can get them in. Robert Eagleson. Pardon? Robert Eagleson, I think he doesn't know if you're muted. Okay, I think you're muted. Can you uh, unmute? Okay. Okay, sir. Robert, can you hello? go ahead? Yes, hello. Go ahead. Hi, I'm Robert Eagleson from 1110 Brackenridge Center Road. Um, I am the property adjacent to. Uh, can we have your mailing the, uh, address? White proposal. Um, my concerns are uh, yes, it's uh, 1110 Brackenridge Center Road. And the postal code? Thank you, Froze. Huh? Frozen? Yeah, my, my internet is spotty out here. So, um, my concerns are for the variance uh, towards the road. Um, why it's needed, I am sure, unsure. Again, there's lots of room for him to build back to the regular setbacks. Uh, I know lots of building in Muskoka, they all have to uh, contend with water and drainage, and he could probably contend with them the same way as everyone else does with a drainage ditch and uh, proper drainage to the setback to the east for the neighbor at 1109. Uh, concerns on that um, from my end is, why does he need a building so close to the lot line where there's potential for the property of 1109, their trees to fall down onto his building um, when he can use a proper setback and eliminate uh, the, that foreseeable problem within the future you know it could be a definite bad ailment for a neighboring's properties to fall on his building you know so he's trying to just try to get rid of that and use the proper setbacks like everyone else should okay and can we have your uh, postal code we missed that i believe say again your, your postal code oh p0b1j0 okay thank you very much Okay, uh, I'm going to let uh, Terry Ledger come back in and uh, make a comment. Uh, thank you. Yes, I'm just I'm talking with the owner too. I think he might be in queue, but he's at least watching. And uh, the 15 foot side yard setback is uh, fine. I think it's like um, he's he's okay to get rid of that variance um, if that helps. And I, I just want to say that. Um, the owner approached all the neighbors, which is why they know about this, and um, and discussed it with them. And this is the first time we've heard any any issues. At least the first time I've heard any issues, which is somewhat disappointing at a meeting, um, which wastes people's time. But uh, yeah, sorry, I'm just checking with him here um, if he wants to speak as well. Um, and oh, he's commenting, sorry, I think he has problems getting connected, but he said the neighbor down the street is also uh, 30 feet from the road. So it's not that it isn't something that's uh, not everybody's uh, 50 feet back from the road. So it, it is in the neighborhood. And like I said, we're happy to remove the variance for the side yard. And I think that's all I'm getting here. As well, but again, I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, uh, I, I guess I will ask, uh, and I will ask is to Terry Ledger, so the agents, so you know, <laughs> yeah. that uh, would you like this deferred so that maybe you can talk to the neighbors and and uh, explain maybe why you need it in that, or uh, 
Um, I don't know just... what, what what the applicant would like, but you know it, it, it may solve some problems if you uh, if you do. Yeah, well, we that's why we spoke to them first. <laughs> so I apologize. Um, I'm just waiting for a response here. <clears throat> I guess it's it's a building issue um, and timing. I guess it's kind of up to committee if if they think that. Uh, the front yard, like I said, um, we're okay to remove the side yard setback uh, request. And uh, if committee feels the front yard is, I mean, it's it's not unknown in the neighborhood. So uh, I'll, I'll, I guess we'll leave that to committee to see, to see what they Okay, I, I see. Okay, Member Quinn. What, um, if, so what was planned for the tree cover that's between the 30 feet, um, the building and the road, what's planned for front yard to, between the building and the road? I don't know that anything is planned at this point. Um, Would they I, be doing like a lawn or they'd be leaving all trees to make it the building hidden? Oh, just a sec. Is it okay if I take the call from him? Yes. I mm -hmm. can ask him? Yep. Hi. Would you, would, no, I know you can't get in, sorry. I'm on the meeting, so they, there is a question from one of the members, and you wondered the, if the area between the road and the build site will be left uh, natural? Yes. Okay, are there any other questions from members? Uh, yes, Mr. Bos Member Bosenworth. Yeah, I think I'd be give, given the tree cover at the front. Uh, if uh, if it is true that other houses on the on the road are, I think he said he could move it back to thirty feet instead of twenty, which is what other houses have, and eliminate the, uh, the side yard setback request. I would support a 30, 30 foot setback from the road. Actually, it's it's, it's thirty nine point five. So that's a setback now that they're asking for 39. I've had concern about the side yard setback from the moment I laid eye on this. There's no, it, it just, it's a huge lot. It doesn't okay. need 10 feet from the lot. Okay, anyone else? Okay, so uh, the owner is uh, uh, is waiving the, the side yard setback? Yes. And you're still like 39.5 feet. You can't move it back any? If we, if the problem is there's a, there's an area behind it where you can't, so it would have to go back then uh, substantially. So we, we just felt it was, uh, you know, part of it, it wasn't, it was in keeping with the neighborhood. It wasn't unheard of uh, and would still fit in. And with the tree buffer in the front, uh, that would help mitigate any impact on, from the road. Okay. I will ask the uh, committee then, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, Member Quinn, I I can support it with those changes with with thirty nine point five feet. Uh, okay. Chair, the uh, the document says thirty feet minimum. For the Permit oh. a dwelling and garage to be set back thirty nine point five feet from Brackovitz Center Road. When I read it, on on page two hundred seven of documentation, it says thirty feet. Yeah, I believe it's a 20 foot variance. The notice that it was originally 39.5 feet and then the notice was updated. Right. Okay, the notice is updated. What is that? What is the exact setback then? 30 feet? Okay, well, that would change. That's 30 feet. Okay, so anybody else? So it's it's uh, the setback is thirty feet. Uh, is our yes? Could we Member just Green. ask? Um, yes. Uh, could we just? Am I muted? Or no, no? you can. We can hear you. Okay. Um, could we just ask uh, Robert Eagleson again um, what neighbors are 
um, at the 30 feet point versus most neighbors or like how, how many are that close to the road? Can he hear us? Okay, Robert, can you, okay. Maybe, maybe uh, Penta or Tom Verkin could answer. Okay, uh, Robert, can you hear me? Can can you answer that that question? How many are are close to the road? It's frozen. It's frozen. Okay. If I may. Yes, you can answer that, Mr. Verkin. So the property that uh, may be in question of the thirty feet would be the old school house, which was basically established in the late 1800s. Um, that would be Mr. Wright's place. Um, the, the only other, shall we say, building is a sea can, which was used as a uh, temporary storage um, at the bottom of the hill. All buildings as far as, shall we say, at the top of the hill, if you know Bracken Rake Center Road, um, everything from the top on to the very end, all buildings are set back well beyond like the 50 foot mark. Okay, thank you. Well, I mean, based on that, I don't like this variance either. I, I would, you know, just personally not vote in favor of this based on uh, feedback. Any other, anyone else? Yes, Member Quinn. You know what, I thought we were talking about a 39 foot, not 30. If it, if yeah. it was at 39, 40 feet back and we we're talking about a 10 foot variance, I would support it a lot easier because they are going to need to cut some tree cover between the building and the bro and the and yeah. the, the, whoop, the trees, and if if it's at uh, thirty feet and they cut ten feet, there's not very many trees between the oh, building. Okay. Oh, you, you're against it at this point. Uh, anyone else? I'm trying to get a, a consensus here. Member Bosomworth, yes. Chair. Yeah. I, I know the bylaw is, I think it's 20 feet, which is a required setback, side yard setback, but this is a very large lot and the neighbors have expressed concern. And I was wondering if, if perhaps the applicant would consider another site more to the center of the uh, center of the lot and eliminate those neighbors concern. I know he doesn't, as long as he met the, the 20 foot requirement, he doesn't have to talk to his neighbors, but that's an option too. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go back to, to Terry Ledger. You have your hand up. Okay. Yes, thank you. I was just talking to the owner. I think uh, a couple things to note. Uh, he mentioned Bissell and Reed are two of the properties that have uh, uh, buildings that close. Um, and I think he's said he could, we can make it work. We'll have to readjust the size of the building a little bit and go out and squat. But we could do the original 39.5. Um, and also that the road is not, I mean, the setback, remember, it's from the property line, not from the road. So there's an yep. extra, you know, 10 to 15 feet to the road uh, that's part of the, the uh, before the property okay. line, and then another 39. I guess, I guess what I was asking is the owner, would they like it deferred at this time to, to, to do some recalculation? So yeah, uh, and that because if we, we if we turn it down, then you're gonna have to reapply at some point. And that uh, and what I'm hearing is it, it may be turned down. I'm not sure, but uh, yes, me member Quinn. Well, if he if he the side back, if he went to if he dropped that part of the minor variance and he went to 39 feet, I would approve this today. Yep. And I think that's that's what I'm getting from him. Yes. Okay, anyone else? The 39 I feet. would agree. I would agree if we drop the side yard setback and we go for a front yard setback of 39.5 okay. feet or whatever. Okay. They I would agree. I would agree too. Yeah, I would too. Okay, so if if you can live with the 39.5 feet, 
and that, then we'll. 39.9, wasn't it? Yeah, 39.9. No, 39.5. Okay, if, uh, and then I'm going to read this motion. Moved by Member Bosworth, second by Member Quinn, be it resolved that application A 1321 White to permit the construction of a single story dwelling and a single story garage is hereby approved with the following variances being granted. One, to permit a dwelling and a garage to be set back 39.5 feet from Brackenbrook Center Road. These variances are granted as shown on the plan attached to notice of decision. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? All those in favor? Thank you. That is carried. <coughs> Thank you very much. Okay. And the next one is uh, A1422 Wilson, and that is uh, Ms. Walker. Thank you, Chair Edwards. The next application to be heard is minor variance application A-14 slash 22 in the name of Wilson. The subject lands are known municipally as 1004 Center Avenue, Unit 1. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plan on page 239 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is summarized as follows. The applicants propose to demolish an existing sleeping cabin and construct a new sleeping cabin in a different location. Relief is also requested from them. Relief is requested from the maximum permitted total lot coverage and lot coverage within 200 feet of the high water mark. The maximum permitted lot coverage is 8%. 8.5% 8 8 lot coverage is proposed on the entire lot and 8.8% coverage is proposed within 200 feet of the high water mark. The requested variances are 0.5% and 0.8% respectively. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 11 days in advance and two submissions have been received to date. The first submission is from Nick Snyder, the Township's Chief Building Official, and this, com, um, this submission was circulated to committee prior to today's meeting. Comments were also received by Tim Sopko, the Township's Public Works Technician, indicating that the Public Works Department has no comments. Staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration and have no objection. Staff have no further comments, but I'm happy to assist committee with any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. And is the applicant applicant's agent here who wishes to speak on this? Yes, the applicant here. Okay, thank you. Oh, hello, I, I'm Randall Wilson, the applicant. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can. You can turn your video on if you like, and we need your full name, address, and postal code, please. Okay. Um, let me just... There, I hope you can see me now. Yes, we can. Oh, wonderful. Yes, yes. My, my name is Randall Wilson, uh, address uh, 21 Stone Glen Drive uh, in Etobicoke, uh, M9C2V6. Uh, I just simply want to uh, uh, thank uh, the committee for considering the application and for the township staff for reviewing it and, and, and uh, uh, for John Jarek for uh, preparing and submitting it uh, uh, to the committee. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, I'd be very happy to, uh, to answer those questions. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Wilson. And is there anyone else here wishing to speak in support of this application? Anyone against this application? Okay, questions from the members? Uh, yes, Mr. Bosom, Member Bosom. Uh, much clarification. I, if, if, if the write-up implies that the new cabin is the same square footage as the ones being removed, but 
And if I'm correct on that, then the drawings show the the new cabin to be quite a bit larger than the existing cabin. And I just need clarification on that. Yes, uh, it, it is a larger cabin. It is a larger cabin uh, than the existing. Um, and I, I hope the application does show that. It, it does. It's just the write-up implied that the coverage was not going to change. Oh. Which is an answer for the, uh, uh, for the planner, not for you. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Yes, Ms. Walker. Could you um, point out where in the report you're referring to, Member Bosworth? Uh, you're muted. If you're wrong, then I have no concerns. Okay, my understanding, and I apologize if the report wasn't clear, the proposed sleeping cabin will be larger than the existing sleeping cabin, which is where the relief is required. I, I may have just misread it then, thank you. No problem. Okay, any other questions? Seeing none. Move by Member Creaser, second by Member Bosworth. Be it resolved that application A1422 Wilson to permit the construction of a new sleeping cabin is hereby approved with the following variances being granted. One, to permit a lot coverage of 1,750 square, 53 square feet or 8.5% of the entire lot. And two, to permit a lot coverage of 1,753 square feet or 8.8% within 200 feet of the high water mark. These variances are granted as shown on plan attached to the notice of decision. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. Any questions or comments? All those in favor. And that's carried. Thank, thank you very much. Okay. And the next application is A1521 Carby, and that's Ms. Darling. Thank you, Chair Edwards. The next application to be heard is minor variance application A-15-22 in the name of Carby. The subject property is known municipally as 1046 Islander Avenue. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plan and drawings on page 260 of the agenda package. The applicants propose to construct a screened porch addition to a single story dwelling. Relief is requested from the maximum permitted lot coverage on a category one lake of 10%. The proposed lot coverage on the entire lot is 10.6% or 2,468 square feet. The variance requested is 0.6%, which equates to 148 square feet over what is permitted. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 11 days in advance and two submissions have been received to date. Submissions were received from the township's public works technician, Tim Sopko, and the township's, township's chief building official, Nick Snyder. These comments were submitted to committee prior to today's meeting. Staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration and have recommended that this application be approved. Staff have no further comments at this time and are happy to answer any questions that committee may have. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's the applicant or applicant's agent here to speak on this. Good morning. Uh, Savas Fratis of Plan Muskoka, PO Box 5384, Huntsville, Ontario, P1H 2K7. I'm here this uh, morning representing the applicants as their agent and as professional planner. I, I don't really have much to add. Um, I think um, the application is fairly straightforward. I read the staff's report and um, it, it describes the application accurately. And I, I agree with the recommendation that it meets the four tests of a minor variance that it should be approved. Um, the one thing I just want to add is that um, you know, normally when I'm looking at these applications, the main thing is we want to make sure that the additional lot coverage is not going to make the or make the property appear overdeveloped, um, given that we're um, proposing a screen porch addition over an existing um, deck that's on the property um, that is uh, no closer to the shoreline than the existing dwelling um, and that the shoreline itself is fairly well buffered you know visually that um, that additional uh, massing of the building does not appear to um, contribute to uh, an overbuilt situation on the property so uh, I believe staff agree with me on that and um, you know I'd uh, be happy to answer any questions the committee may have thank you thank you very much 
And is there anyone else Christian speaking support? Anyone in opposition? Okay, questions from the members? No questions? Good. Moved by Member Grogan Green, a second by Member Quinn, be it resolved that application A-1522, Carby, to permit the construction of a screen porch addition to a single story dwelling is hereby approved with the following variances being granted. One, to permit a lot coverage of 2,468 square feet or 10.6 of the entire lot. This variance is granted as shown on the plan attached to the notice of decision. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. Any questions or comments? All those in favor. That is carried. Thank you. And the last application is A1722 Grundy. And that is Miss Darling. Thank you, Chair Edwards. Next application to be heard is minor variance application A-17-22 in the name of Grundy. The subject property is known municipally as 1074 Woodington Road, unit number one. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plan on 277 and 278 of the agenda package. The applicants propose to construct a dock addition. Relief is requested from the minimum lot of record requirements of 100 feet. The subject lot has 72.8 feet of frontage. The variance will permit a dock addition on an undersized lot and will not deem the lot a building lot. Relief is also requested from the minimum side yard setback for a, for a dock of 15 feet. The proposed dock addition is to be set back six feet from the northeasterly side lot line. The variance requested is nine feet. Relief is also requested from the minimum side yard setback for a dock of 21.5 feet. The proposed dock addition is to be 10 feet from the southerly side lot line. The variance requested is 11.5 feet. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 11 days in advance and four submissions have been received to date. Submissions were received by the Township's Public Works Technician, Tim Sopko, the Township's ch ch sorry, Chief Building Official, Nick Snyder, the third submission is from area neighbor, Eddie Hensey. Sorry if I mispronounced your name. And the fourth submission is from another area neighbor, neighbors, Carol and Jean Paul Bengal. These comments were submitted to committee prior to today's meeting. Staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration and have recommended the application be approved. Staff have no further comments at this time and are happy to answer any questions committee may have. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Darling. And is the applicant or applicant agent here wishing to speak on this? Uh, Emily Thaler, um, Marie Poirier Planning and Associates. Um, I'm here on behalf of the half of the applicant. Okay. All right. Um, 44A King William Street, Huntsville, Ontario, P1H1G3. Um, we represent the owners of 1074 Whittington Road, uh, Eric and Valerie Grundy. Um, firstly, I'd just like to thank staff for their work on this. Um, I'd like to thank committee for hearing the proposal today. Uh, the proposed dock extension is modest in size, um, designed to fit with the unique nature of the shoreline and the property boundaries. Uh, as staff noted, the existing setback uh, to the north northerly lot line is about six and a half feet and abuts that uh, uh, road allowance. The existing setback is proposed to be maintained um, will not be further reduced, um, but a minor variance is still required to permit the um, dock addition itself. A minor variance is also requested to reduce the setback to the, excuse me, the southerly lot line of 10 feet. Um, and relief is also required to permit the dock addition as a whole as the subject property is not considered uh, a buildable lot um, just due to the deficient lot frontage. Um, the purpose of the dock extension is to allow for, or for better usability of the structure and to assist with obtaining uh, a slightly greater water depth for safe docking. The property itself has an area of over an acre and a half, um, very modestly developed with a dwelling, sleeping cabin, shed, dock. Uh, the majority of the property is maintained in a natural state. Um, the primary factors leading to the requested variance is just the unique pie-shaped nature of the lot. 
um, which allows for ample room on land, but obviously results in a deficient lot frontage and a challenge when attempting to meet uh, the required side yard setbacks for shoreline structures. Uh, as you know, the side yard setbacks for shoreline structures are taken from uh, the projected side lot lines. And when you've got a pie shaped structure, everything kind of moves inward. And then, so the further out you go, kind of the, the less, the, the smaller um, the building envelope it becomes. Um, the proposed dock extension would not result in a dock longer than permitted or a dock even uh, wider than permitted, um, built like as for the bylaw. Um, because of the angled lot lines though, these variances are required. Uh, it's our opinion, um, we agree with staff that the, the proposal itself meets the um, intent of the bylaw, meets the four tests of minor variance and we kindly request committee's consideration and approval. Uh, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else wishing to speak in support of this application? Anyone in opposition? Yes, there is. Okay, would you bring them in, please? Oh, am I in? Oh. Morning. Morning. Um, my name is Carol Anderson Bago. I am south of the. Of oh, the. Uh, have your, uh, your address and postal code. Please. Oh, sorry. Um, everybody, everybody forgot that. Okay, Carol Anderson Bago. It's ten seventy four dash three, Whittington Road. P O B one J O, uh, and we are the south abutting product property. I sent in a written report with pictures, so I'm not sure if those have been looked at by all the committee members or whether I need to go over some of the points on there. <clears throat> Did I, is that in the folder? I, I don't recall seeing it. Uh, I, um, we, it we, should we, be. I saw a submission um, by a retired uh, volunteer fireman. Uh, no. I, I sent it in on Thursday afternoon and Rachel assured me that it was going to be part of the package. <clears throat> I can just go over it. I have it right uh, Yeah, Yes, that would be great. Okay. Um, so I, my, my face may be familiar because... Um, this came up to committee in 2018 with, and I responded in <laughs> with many of the same points. Um, so the, uh, we are on the south side. So <clears throat> we're on the side where the dock would be 10 feet from the property line. Um, so my first point was that I, I call it an unsuitable lot. In the spring of 2017, the current owner, Mr. Grandy and Mrs. Grandy purchased a lot with limited possibilities that does not meet their no needs. <clears throat> Nobody has used the abandoned dwellings or docks since 2014. The planner calls these modest, but they are basically falling apart and full of mold. <clears throat> it, <clears throat> in the 2018 report, um, it stated that this property was 66.2 feet of shoreline. Now it's 72. Um, so that might be a question somebody can answer for me. It's in a, this lot is in a shallow beach. It's pie shaped, as uh, you've already said, and the really narrow. So from the Woodington Stronic Sea-Doo Dock over to the other side, it's about uh, 257 feet. It's next to a public uh, access right away that's used in all seasons by locals, cottagers and contractors. <clears throat> My main point, I guess, is that they are asking for an extension, but with an extension, they get no further depth. And um, neither the planning de department nor the planners have actually measured that depth. Um, <clears throat> so in a shallow bay, extra length on a dock, uh, especially one so close to the beach does not significantly increase the depth at the end of the dock. Water depth at the end of the current dock is around two feet. And at the end of the proposed extension, it is still two feet. Um, and I had a, I had a, an aerial photo. I don't know if I can do it this way or not. An aerial photo that points this out. Um, their dock would be here, I believe. Let me look, okay, here, and you can see if I move my finger in the direction that the, um, 
extension would go, that the water is exactly the same depth. So that's that would be about 40 feet. And if you go out another 20, they're still in the shallow area. It is in the front. Yeah. The trouble is I can't access it from here. This is why I was on oh, it. So that, that's the nature of this this area. This mm -hmm. is um, I'm doing this backwards. Uh, this is the Stronic dock. This is the a version of this dock bef before it was uh, rebuilt. And <clears throat> they want to extend it toward coming towards our property on an angle, not straight out, but on an angle towards our property. And that will give them no more depth. And <clears throat> this is my husband. Sorry about that, Jean Paul. Oh. Uh, this is my husband standing at the end of their current dock in the two plus feet of water. And this is my husband standing. I hope I'm not shaking. Uh, standing at the end of what would be their extension. There is no difference whatsoever. Mm -hmm. by adding another 20 feet angling towards us. Uh, and, and this is just the, the nature of the bay, okay? Uh, this is the former dock that was there. It was not, uh, um, it, it had a crib portion and it had a, it had a aluminum section that was no longer uh, used because it was damaged by the ice. And this was taken probably in about 2014, 2015. And so I said, <clears throat> I, I don't wanna go over my five minutes, but I, it's harder that when you don't have the pictures. Note the yellow green color of the shallow water around the former crib section and the aluminum end section in order to, uh, in order to uh, reach a depth of 2.5, feet, the dock would have to be 82 feet long. Um, I've spent my whole life in this bay. My parent, my father spent his whole life in this bay and so did my grandmother and my great grandfather. <laughs> and we know it like the back of our hands. So <clears throat> and you're gonna have to believe my measurements. Um, so point number three was uh, <clears throat> safety enjoyment view and privacy. And I said, our family is, has enjoyed the safety and privacy of this bay since 1882. <clears throat> Six generations have learned to swim on the hard pack sand without the fear of regular motorboat passage. The proposed extensions means that boats will be traveling across the area that we use on a regular basis for swimming, playing, sailing, canoeing, and kayaking. It will also prevent us from accessing the lake in winter for snowshoeing and other winter sports. The angle of the proposed dock is invasive and would direct all boat traffic to pass right in front of our property and our swimming dock, just because they're going to have to come in and circle around to get to their dock. Um, <clears throat> uh, the current dock, is 21.5 feet from the side, so the side lot line. And the proposed extension is only 10 feet. Uh, with boats more, they could easily reach the property line and hem us in completely. Um, the current dock is a non-complying dock. Uh, it replaced, like I said, a, a dock that was- uh, Excuse uh, me, you're gonna have to start wrapping it up here. Okay. Well, Okay, so the other dock that was there before was used successfully for many years. Um, and contractors, it's unfortunate you don't have those pictures. Uh, you can see that contractors do use that uh, road allowance and they are able to come in and maneuver. There, I had a picture of uh, a, large, uh, a large motored uh, work boat coming in. So um, my conclusion is that uh, the relief of 27.2 feet to allow a lot with 60, 66.2 feet of frontage uh, is, is not minor. Uh, if it's a 66 foot uh, frontage as stated in the 2018 site report, 
then you're actually asking for 33.8 feet of frontage. Um, it does not increase functionality to have an extension, but it does change the nature of the bay. For the current owner, the dock extension does increase their property value, but it decreases the value of our permanent residents. And most importantly, the enjoyment of our much loved piece of Muskoka. So we are asking that you turn down this application. Okay, thank you very much. Is there anyone else here wish to speak in opposition to this application? No. Okay. Um, I'm going to let the uh, planner uh, answer uh, if, if, if you would like a uh, rebuttal on any of that. And, and then I'm going to turn it over to the uh, committee for questions. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I don't know yes. that I have a, a rebuttal per se, um, other than to, to kind of reiterate the the modest size of the of the dock extension. I don't know that I don't, you know, I obviously don't live in that exact area, but I the dock was designed to um, you know, have minimal impact based on the you know road allowance to the north. Um, trying to angle it as best we can to to maintain the setbacks as, as well as possible. Um, and you know whether you know it'll change the egress and egress of the of the boat traffic. I I don't think it's going to be awfully significant. Boats should be traveling slowly going into shore anyway, um, and we don't you know see any massive navigation concerns resulting okay. from this. Addition. Okay, uh, I have a question for you. Will that be a floating dock? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, I don't think it's intended to be a boat floating dock, but the architect was hoping to be here today to speak to that. Um, but unfortunately, the meeting ran a little long. And he couldn't be because here. Because so. why I'm asking, and that uh, I'm sorry, uh, ma'am, you've had your five minutes, and that, and it's turned over to the committee now. But there's another speaker. There is another speaker? Yes. Okay. Sorry, there's... We can't see another speaker. No, there's no... No, we don't, don't have any... He's asking for the phone number. Oh, uh, Chris Karen uh, of, uh, of uh, the property on the northeast side that works for Stronix is asking to join. <clears throat> What is the phone number? Is there, is there a phone number he can use? Okay. Why I was asking the planner and that is it's going to be a floating dock or not? Because if, if it's not a floating dock, will there be bubblers in there? Because that will uh, affect the, the road right away. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, I don't know that um, offhand, but I can, I can try to contact the applicant right now and um, see okay. if I can't get an answer. Yes, sir. Uh, if you would like to come on, we'll get your name, address, and uh, postal code, please. Um, you're waiting for me, Chris Karen? Yes, I am, sir. Yes. My name is Chris Karen. I'm the property manager at 1081 Woodington Road in Manette, postal code PLB1JO. Thank you for waiting for me. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, my comments to be made on this uh, application, this minor variance application, I'm the neighbor on the Northeast side and uh, we've been through this before and I'm sure you probably remember me from the last time we were there, uh, that we had discussed the safety aspect of having this dock extension done or <laughs> having a dock there period being the fact that there is no water depth in that area at all. So in order to protrude that dock out even further, we're bringing it in closer to an area where there's a public launch, an, an active public launch, where lots of people swim, lots of people come to launch boats, which they can't launch because I'm forever having to pull them out because they're stuck. And, uh, you know, in the wintertime, they're going to bubble that. And I usually have to shut my bubblers off in order for contractors to have access onto the lake. And... Uh, I have a couple of concerns about safety. Uh, it's a public launch, but it seems to be a swim area for people, those that don't live on the water. And uh, I've, I've been very concerned because even for myself, uh, coming in and out access of the bay by boat, uh, I have found myself in a number of instances where I've not noticed a small head floating and I 
mass of water and I've almost come in contact. And to have more boats in that area is a, a terrible danger. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. And there's no one else in the uh, queue? No. Okay. I'm going to ask, uh, open up to uh, questions from the uh, committee. Uh, yes, Member Creaser. Um, if the ex if the uh, reason for the variance is that they suggest they're going to have more depth on the dock extension, and yet it does it shows that they won't have more depth, then I would have to say that I am against this application. Mm -hmm. Hi, Member Bosomworth. I agree with Member Creaser. Um, when we get requests for variance on docks, uh, there's particularly uh, and it is a very small lot by any definition. We're, we're not taking two feet shorter than 100 feet. This is a significantly shorter than a 100 foot lot. Um, and if nothing's to be gained because the water's no deeper than I am with uh, Member Creaser, I don't think this should be approved. Okay, anyone else like to comment on that? Okay. Um, as, as I said, I, I really have problems with this because it is public access. It is being used. If there's bubblers there, somebody could go through the ice and it's a, it's a safety uh, issue on that. We're going to have to maybe look at the bubblers because I know I'm in Windermere and the Windermere Beach in the winter because of a bubbler can't be used by anybody getting out on the water at that beach. So um, I will read this. Moved by Member Quinn, second by Member Creaser, be it resolved that application A1722 Grundy to permit the construction of a dock addition is hereby approved with the following variances being granted. One, to permit a dock addition on an undersized lot, to permit a dock addition to be set back six feet from the northeasterly side lot line projection, and to permit a dock addition to be 10 feet from the southerly side lot line projection. These variances are granted as shown on the plan attached to the notice of decision. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Sorry, sir, that, uh, and that, uh, all opposed. And that is denied. Thank you for your time. Okay, uh, is there a, an OLT up, update? Uh, yeah, no, okay, I just see it like it's in there. I didn't think there was, but I just thought I would mention it. I, I think we have the Heller application that we're going back to, the Heller application. Oh, sorry. Okay, well, I don't even see a, a thing for it. Oh, that's what, oh yeah, I know. The one from earlier. Sorry, yes. I'm sorry, it's one of those days. Okay, we'll go back to the, the Heller uh, application. And that would be. Uh, is that on? Or, uh, that's that's the one that we um, set aside so they could get an answer for us. Yeah, I was just wondering what page it was. Uh, okay, uh, what page is? Uh, just a second. Yeah, I found it. It's page twenty. Okay, that's. Okay. Right. Okay, yes. I remember it now. Go ahead, Ms. Wilson. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, I got a hold of the property owner and we talked about the option of the zoning amendment to limit the frontage coverage on the severed lot to 50 feet, and he's more than happy to do that. He has no development plans for the property. So he's fine with that. Okay. Okay, now, uh, how do we add that in, uh, David, so that uh, we have that? On the added one. Uh, 
assume committees. Pardon? I assume committee agrees with that. Okay. Now, are the uh, the uh, committee agree with that to, to limit the, the new one to 50 feet? Register on uh, title? Okay. I, I have a consensus. I apologize, Heather, for almost missing you there. No, no, that's okay. I was keeping an eye on it. Good. Just so I understand correctly, does that mean they get to keep their frontage on the? It keeps the, the frontage, and the the other lot is is restricted to okay. fifty yep. feet. And this has been done before. Very well. Thank you very much. Okay. Moved by Member Creaser, second by Member Grogan Green, be it resolved that consent be granted for application B1221 ML Heller, provided the following conditions are fulfilled. One, a registered description deed of the separate lot and any required right away be submitted to the Secretary Treasurer along with a registered copy of a reference plan. Two, did the applicant enter in a consent agreement with the township pursuant to section 5126 of the Planning Act? Said agreement shall be registered against the title of the lands and, and contain a provision that is set to the satisfaction of the township where the applicant agrees not to utilize public parking and docking facilities as a principal means of access to retain in separate lots. In addition to said provisions, shall require an adequate long-term parking and docking facilities used to access the newly created lot to be secured at all times. Three, that the documentation satisfactory to the township securing long-term mainland parking and docking facilities to access the newly created vacant lot is provided. Four, confirmation be received that the township is satisfied with the separate and retained lots are satisfactory to on-site sewage disposal and that any problems identified with any existing sewage system be corrected to the satisfaction of the township. Five, that the assessment be undertaken to, by a qualified professional to determine the wild land fire risk and required mitigation measures and any recommendation to be implemented to the satisfaction of the township. Six, that cash into a parkland be dedicated to the township in the amount of 5% of the value of the newly created separate lot or the entire land, whichever is less. And seven, that a zoning bylaw amendment be approved to limit the cumulative dock width on the separate lot to a, to a maximum of 50 feet and, a cumulative, and four, that a cumulative dock width be uh, recognized for the uh, retained lot. This application conforms with the requirement of the uh, comprehensive zoning bylaw 1414 and, and amended and the township official plan and the district official plan. And I'm not gonna read the other because of the standard and um, all those in favor. Anyone opposed? I, sorry, Member Creaser, were you, you voting for that? Uh, yes, I was okay. voting for it. I just, sometimes the satellite's slow. Okay, oh, I, just a little bit late there. So I want to make sure. Thank you very much, committee. Uh, and I still have one to read. 
And that is uh, moved by member Bosenworth, second by member Creaser. Be it resolved that application A9921 Heller to recognize the resultant cumulative dock width of 122 feet is hereby approved. This variance is granted on the notice of decision. I'm sorry, this variance is granted as shown on the plan attached to the notice of decision. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. Any questions or comments? All those in favor. Okay, thank you. That's Thank Carrie. you very much. And before I read the last motion, I would like to thank uh, Rachel Mulholland. And she is moving on to bigger and better things. She's now a planning technician and we're gonna miss her at the role because she's you know, keeping me in line all this time. But I'm hoping uh, our, our, our new, new clerk has been taking notes and <laughs> will keep me in line as well. But congratulations, uh, Rachel. I really appreciate working with you. Thank you, Sam. And um, moved by Member Bosenworth, second by Member Creaser. Be it resolved, this meeting adjourned at 11.49 a.m. All those in favor. Thank you. Have a great day, and we'll see you next month. Thank you.